When developing an application, you are usually dependent on the data you have available to interact with. When we are just starting out, we have no real data to depend on for our development. There are two ways to handle this. Number one is to use abstraction in your client and provide the required data for your demo purposes. This is a method that I've shown in my abstraction to improve development speed tutorial. Number two is to populate your backend with fake data. This is what we are going to do in this tutorial. Here we check if we are running on the emulator and if we are, we pre-populate our database with the information that we want. In the following 10 minutes, you'll learn how to set up Firebase for local development using the Firebase emulator. How will we do this? We'll use a popular faker.js package to get the fake data so we don't need to create our own strings. Faker will provide us with certain values like names, dates, product names, ratings. We will then use this to populate our database based on what we want to start building in the app. Let's take a look at what we need to generate. We'll use the UI that we want to build next to determine what the minimum amount of data is that we require to complete the majority of the development requirement to show the data that we have. The first thing I would like to do is simply just list merchants. So as you can see on screen, there are different ways that merchants are listed but we will choose this one for now when we list a merchant we need its name we need the categories that it falls under we need a ratings and a number of ratings we'll do the times and delivery fees later because that will be dependent on how far you are from the merchant or restaurant that you're buying from in addition to the merchant itself when we look at a menu which we want some basic form built after the next few videos we have our products products fall into categories so we need to get categories we need the name the category goes under there and then a price as well so we know the basics of what we want let's talk about the actual models that we want to generate and how we will be doing that based on our planning over on github.com forward slash full stacks forward slash boxed out we went over the basics of what we want we know we'll have a merchant model and associated collection. The data from the designs over here has shown us that what we need in the merchant is the name, the image, categories, this will be the cuisines for the food delivery version of our app, the rating and the number of ratings. And for the product, we will have the name, the description, price, an image, a category which will be singular and a price which will be the integer in cents. With the models above faked, we'll be able to start building our UI and fetching and showing merchants and products. Now, let's start the faking functionality. If you haven't been following along and you don't have the code base, head back over to github.com forward slash full stacks forward slash boxed out and clone the code for the repo. When you have the code, you can go to the source folder and inside the source folder, you can go and open the backend folder. Once you open up the folder, we can now start our development. The first thing we'll do is in the functions folder, we will run the npm install command to make sure we have the latest of all the packages. Then we can open up our index.ts file and then we'll add the code to check if we are on the functions emulator and we'll print out that we are running on the emulator just so that we can see if it works. And to check that everything works, we're going to do an npm run build. And then we're going to run Firebase emulators start. If you scroll through your logs, we should see that we are running emulator locally, which gives us the perfect place to fake our data before the functions are created. Now we can move on to setting up our fake data. We'll start by installing a package called faker. And to keep things neat, as always, we're going to create a new file in the functions source folder in a new folder called system and we'll call the file fake data populator.ts the first thing we'll do is import firestore from the firebase admin package then we'll create a function called log that will take in a message string and this function will simply do a console log but put the fake data populator name in front of the log being printed out then we can create our new class called fake data populator. The first thing we'll do is define the property that we'll pass in, which is the Firestore database of type Firestore. This will be passed in through the constructor and we'll set the 
member firestore database equal to the one passed in from the constructor. And next up, we'll create a function called generate fake data. And this is the function that will be used to generate our fake data. We'll start off by logging that we have called this function. And then we'll simply go to the merchants collection and we'll add a new document with a name that says I am first merchant. And to use this functionality, we will import the fake data populator in the index.ts file. And we'll also need to import the Firebase admin. Then we can call admin.initialize app. And then we can get our Firestore database from the admin package. Inside of the check to see if we are on the emulator, we will now construct a new fake data populator and pass in the Firestore database. And the last thing we'll do is to call generate fake data. We can now build our code and then we can start our Firebase emulators. In the logs, we'll see that we call generate fake data. And if we open up Firestore local UI, you'll see that we have a single collection called merchants, a document, and the name in that document is I am first merchant. Now there's one thing that will happen if you are going to keep your Firebase functions running while you are changing the backend. And that is that the merchants will be duplicated over and over in this file. I'll show you an example by simply typing something in the file and then saving it. As you see, it rebuilds, it calls it again. So in our file, we'll now have multiple documents with the same name. We'll solve this by using a document in the database that we can check before we generate our other data. We'll create a collection called data and inside we'll have a document called generate. If that document exists, we don't generate anything. If it doesn't, then we do. So in the fake data populator, we'll create a private function called get generate document that will return the document reference. And in this function, we'll index into the collection data and then return the document with the ID generate. We'll also create a function called create generate document. This will return a promise of type void. We'll start off by logging that we are calling this function. Then we'll get the generate document and call set on that document with an empty map. Now to make use of this functionality, we will first get the generate document using the get call on the get generate document function. Then we can check if this document does not exist. And if it does not exist, we want to first await and create the generate document. Then after that, we want to actually generate any of our data. To test this out, we will do a build and then launch the emulators. If we open up the Firestore local UI now, you'll see that we have this new generate document added. We have a single merchant. And if we change anything out in our code, there's no additional data that is added. So now that our setup is done, it's time to actually generate some data. We'll start by generating the merchants. We know the five properties that we want to generate. So we'll choose the closest matching faker function and get that in there. We'll start by creating a function to create our merchant document for us. This function will be called create merchant document. It will be marked as a sync and it will await on the Firestore database indexing into the merchants collection and we'll add the merchant being passed into the function. Then we'll add another function called generate merchants. We'll log that we are in this function and then we'll create a for loop that will loop 30 times. The first thing we'll do in this for loop is create a merchant variable. This will be a map and we'll start off by adding the name of the merchant. Now for this functionality, we want to use Faker. So we'll go to the top and import Faker from the Faker package. For the name, we'll use Faker.commerce.productName. And if you want to see everything that's available on Faker, you can go to github.com forward slash marak forward slash Faker.js. For the image, we will 
use the faker.image.image URL and pass in the category food. For the categories, we will index into the commerce again and get two instances of department out. For the rating, we will get a data type of float and we'll give it a decimal of two. And for the number of ratings, we will get a data type of type number anywhere between zero and 200. Then now that we have the merchant document, we can create this document by using our create merchant document call. And the final step in this case is to call generate merchants in the generate fake data function in the place of our silly little collection update. To test this out, let's do a build and start the emulators. I tried to build and I got this error. I don't know exactly what this means, but I will run it and it should work after that. You can open up the Firestore UI and in there we will now see multiple merchants with not so accurate product information for a food delivery service. That is basically the process that we'll follow to generate everything in our fake data. Next up, we'll do the products, which is a sub collection in the merchants document. So because the products will be a sub collection in the merchants document, we'll first need to update the create merchant document function to return a string through a promise. Then we can update the code that adds the merchant to store the document reference being returned. And then we will return the document reference .id value. And to make use of this, we can go to the generate merchants function, where we'll now store the value returned from the create merchant document function in a new variable called merchant ID. Using this variable, we will call a new function called generate merchant products, and we'll pass in the merchant ID. This new function will look very similar to our generate merchants function. So I'll duplicate that function. We'll change the name to generate merchants products. And then we'll change the name of the map to product. The product name will stay the same. We need to add a new property called description. And this will use the faker.lorem.paragraph function. We'll pass in a number two to indicate that we want two sentences. Image will stay the same. The categories will change to a singular category. The ratings can be removed and we'll set the price equal to faker.datatype.number and we'll pass in 8999 as the maximum value. Then we need to create this sub collection in the merchant document. We'll do this by calling a function called create merchant product. This will take in a string merchant ID and it will take in the product that has been created. We can create this function called create merchant product. It has a merchant ID of type string and a product of type any. To create this, we'll go into the merchants collection. Then we'll get the merchant document matching the merchant ID. And inside of that document, we'll go to the products collection and we'll add the new product onto that collection. Then we need to make sure that we add the merchant ID into the function parameters. If we build now and run the emulators, if we now go and open up the Firestore UI, we can now see that we have all the information required to build the UI that we want. We have merchants, inside of those merchants we have products, and those products have values that will allow us to create a UI that looks dynamic every time that we run it. And that is the process that we'll use going forward to generate and develop our application. The point of this is to decouple the dependency of the front end on the back end, not in terms of functionality, but in terms of the data you need to actually build your front end UI. Sometimes the back end isn't complete, like in our case right now, Sometimes it's not enough data on the back end, like in our case right now, but we still want to build the front end because the back end functionality wouldn't take so long to implement after the front end has been completed. But to do that, we need some data on our back end. 
This is the setup that we'll be using going forward and we'll add more details into this fake implementation as we need additional details that we come across. Thank you guys for watching and if you like this video please consider subscribing. I'll be making more Firebase and Flutter tutorials every week in the future. Thank you and I'll see you guys next week.